Hi friends, I'm Ty Landrum and I'm here with my friend Anna Goryeva at Purple Valley in Goa, India. And we wanted to make a video uh, addressing the question, how do I work on TikToks? So to work on TikToks, you first need a fairly stable handstand. If you don't have a fairly stable handstand, then the TikToks is probably too much, too much on the shoulders uh, and just too much of a demand on even your kind of proprioceptive awareness and balance, etc. So the first thing to do is to come into a nice handstand. And maybe if you back up just a little so that you can drop over and stand up out of this one. Yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Now, you could just jump up into the handstand, but if you have somebody to help you, then they can help you to pike up just by leaning into the shoulders. And then I'm going to lift her hips so that she comes up. And we'll check out this handstand. So maybe lift the feet a little bit higher. There we go. And so I'm going to just like hold her here for a few moments to really feel the integrity of that handstand. Notice that her shoulders are rolling back. She's pushing her hands down into the floor. Arms are straight. She's pushing through the index finger and thumb. She's got a nice engagement in the low belly, which is keeping the integrity of the connection between the heart and the pelvis. And she's making micro adjustments in her shoulders and hands to hold the balance. Okay. Now, She's going to, instead of tick-tocking, she's just going to do the first part. Let's call it the tick part. So she's going to drop over. And then I'll help her stand up. Okay. So in the conventional Ashtanga sequencing, that move of dropping over and standing up comes after the tick-tocks. But it makes a lot of sense to learn that move first, to work on that move before you start trying to kick all the way back over. And so let me describe for you the way that I assist that dropping over part in case you want to uh, ask someone like a significant other who maybe doesn't know how to assist you in this particular move, which is probably a bad idea, but mm, just in case I'll show you how I do this because if it's, it can be done very badly, in which case it's somewhat dangerous. So if you would, Anna, come back. So I, I want to, I'm going to go ahead. So here we go. So she's going to jump up and I'm going to catch her feet. Okay. And then I'm going to grab just above and to the back of the knees and she's going to start to take her feet apart as she arches. Okay. And I don't want her shoulders to come too far forward. That is toward her feet, but I also don't want to press them too far back. So she's going to come down and I lower her nice and slowly. And then I'll come around to the other side, squeezing with the forearms on the hips and with the fingers on the QL muscles somewhere just above the place where her back bends the most to help bring her up. Maybe we do that once more. Mm -hmm. Now the thing about the shoulders in relation to the hands is that the farther back the shoulders are, the slower you're going to come down. So if you're working on doing this by yourself, you want to press your hands way forward to keep your shoulders behind the crease of your wrist. That'll keep your center of gravity further back to counterbalance the weight of the legs coming overhead. If you don't do that, you'll come down super fast. With that said, if you're giving some assistance to this posture and you know, I sort of jokingly said before that you might get your significant other to do this. I can in good conscience recommend that. You really want, you know, an experienced yoga teacher to, to help you with this one. Um, and if you are an experienced yoga teacher and you're helping people with this, uh, maybe it's helpful to know how I'm doing this. One thing that you really want to be careful of is that you don't press the person back this way to make their shoulders go behind their hands. Because if you do that, the shoulders might hyperextend too much. And it's, it's not unheard of that people dislocate their shoulders in exactly that way. So you instruct the person who's doing 
the asana to push their hands forward and take their shoulders back. And you give space to that. You sort of invite that, but you don't push into that direction. Okay? And um, that's the way to, to do it safely while also keeping it slowed down. So we, can we do it once more? Okay. Okay. So she comes up. She's arching. The feet come apart a little bit. I catch behind and just above the knees and I step forward a little bit of her hand so I can lower down nice and easy. And she lands and then I help her come up. Okay, awesome. So now let's go ahead and do uh, a full TikTok and I'm gonna assist her in exactly the same way now the trick is to come as far forward as you can this way before your feet leave the ground. So once she comes up to the handstand and then drops over, she's going to kind of naturally rock that way. She's going to move with the momentum that way. And then there's going to be a kind of a little natural bounce back. And on that bounce back, we're going to come back over. And then of course, that's the way that you do it without assistance. So you come up, drop over, rock forward, jump up and come back down, okay? So that action of pressing the hands to make the shoulders go back is essential here when you're coming back around. You don't so much jump your lower body up and over your upper body as you push your weight this way and then pull your upper body through using your upper body strength, keeping your shoulders as far back that way as you can. And you've got to keep your hips in extension, not in flexion, but in extension until you feel your weight shift over your shoulders and hands so that you know you're going back this way rather than that way. If you flex your hips any earlier than that moment, you won't make it over, okay? So here we go. Okay. And arching. So she goes over, she rocks and jumps. Nice, again. I'll do two more if you're up for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. So we catch. She goes over, then jumps. Notice the hips don't flex until right there. And if they flex earlier, she's not. She's not gonna. We're not gonna make it. Last one. Sorry, she's a little far forward there, but we sorted it out. And here we go. So she pushes her center of gravity back that way, comes down, rocks, and then up and all the way around. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Anna. So one final thing that we wanted to show, and this is particularly useful if you just are practicing at home alone, is that you might work with, if you have something, a bench or kind of a lower bed or anything to work on, you can practice coming back over by putting your feet up on the bench, which just makes it a whole lot easier. So you can maybe even come into the handstand and drop over, or you could even just, you know, from the floor, you might be able to put your feet up on it either way, but I think we'll drop over onto it. And we'll just show this last thing and I'll go ahead and assist you, especially since that might be a little slippery with our wet feet. Okay, so she comes up and then she's gonna drop over, putting her feet there. Same action, but so much easier. And so that's a way that you can practice TikToking at home or maybe with some, you know, with some trustworthy assistance. Thank you so much, Alexi. Anna, <laughs> and thanks for listening.